So uh, I, I thought it was interesting to see in the uh, sort of the material here that you learned English in part by playing video games. I did, man. Yeah. So uh, I was born, well, my family's from Tijuana and I basically uh, learned English around like age eight or nine. And oh. so I started, I would play video games and that's basically how I would start mimicking the English language. Like it used to be like Nintendo, oh. like there's a, a hockey game I had called Blades of Steel. And I just love how the announcer would be like, Blades of Steel. And I would just <laughs> always say that and drive my parents crazy. Um, but that was one of the best ways that I learned how to how to speak English. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Wow, yeah, interesting. So it must be uh, quite fun to actually uh, act in a video game. Yeah, a hundred percent. It was just like it was something I've always wanted to, uh, especially after moving to LA, to like immerse myself in. And then the more that I'm more, the more that I got some opportunities, the more that I was just like, you know, I always say that I'm a professional on the outside, but like very giddy on the inside as a kid when I work on projects like this. So so it's been great. And uh, uh, I guess it was interesting to to have this sort of uh, uh, storyline move into uh, into Mexico. I guess uh, I wonder what uh, that also felt like. Yeah, this was um, it was a really amazing opportunity to work with Infinity Ward. I've been a fan of the Call of Duty franchise for a long time, especially the the reboot in 2019. Um, and so to be able to portray not only a Mexican soldier, but like. A badass Mexican soldier, along with uh, Colonel Alejandro Vargas. Um, mm -hmm. It was really cool to see what they were doing with the storyline, but also like outside of the stereotypical Hollywood, you know, thing where we're corrupt or you don't know or this and that. We were just loyal, you know, soldiers that were loyal to their to their country and what they fight for. And I thought that was really cool to be able to portray that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that was very interesting to me as as well. I, I played through the whole game, and uh, um, you know, there there's a twist in the story there where um, you know, you would sort of normally think the Americans would stick with the Americans, right? Yeah, <laughs> but exactly. And uh, when when you have some bad Americans that are not behaving so well, then uh, uh, in this case, the soldiers. Uh, uh, sort of stuck with the soldiers right and that i thought yeah. that was a very interesting sort of uh take uh, yeah i mean know. there's always the, the element of of what are we fighting for what are we trying to protect and if you know our superiors do have our back and do not and in this case within the storyline it's like you, you stick with your brothers you know um <laughs> and especially the you know, the, the part in the story where, you know, 141 and the vaqueros, you know, los vaqueros, they get together and realize they got to stick together and fight as one and no one fights alone, you know, mm -hmm. which is a, a common theme without, uh, throughout this game that no one fights alone. So I think I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I, I guess it's also interesting that um, the writers here were also sort of um, just willing to uh, embrace a, a sort of a, a different perspective. Like a, it's almost like a, an interesting diversity angle to have a story where, um, people are say not behaving in the uh, stereotypical ways that you would expect for you know a story set in Mexico with you know drug cartels involved right yeah um the 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 uh, main story editor and writer Jeff Nagus and then Brian Bloom as well who I was a fan of because he was also Reyes in Call of Duty um they were very especially me being Mexican you know, uh, basically first generation, zero generation in a way. Um, they were very, very uh, open to any type of ideas because what was super important to them was authenticity and mm -hmm. speci specificity. And so we, whenever we would do scripts that had dialogue in Spanish, they would always be, you know, super open-minded with any type of additions or um, any type of ideas that we had to to really make it authentic. Mm -hmm. um and they get having that liberty also makes us as the as actors more proud of the story that we're telling mm -hmm. um but there was a lot of research done just from choosing the names of like something for example sin nombre you know mm -hmm. or the name of the las almas cartel and uh just to make sure that they were like being as authentic and true as they could be to real life mm -hmm. um and I, that was really, really cool. And again, like I said, it just makes you more proud of, of your work and, and of mm -hmm. the game. Yeah. Were there some details that sort of stood out to you in, in that way? That, uh, just things that say it seems to get right, I guess. 
Yeah, well, one of the very interesting story, well, a quick interesting story was the fact that initially they were trying to, when they were trying to find the name of uh, El Sinombre, there was all these different ideas of how to, like, what the cool name could be for, like, one of the gang leaders, and it was like Tarantula, it was like El Scorpio and all this stuff, but so, there are people and figures like that in Mexico that exist with those names, so they had to make sure that they didn't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> use someone else's name to glorify, for example. Yeah. Um you know who they are so they it was very very you know uh you know this dangerous ground so it's like you have to be super super precise with uh what you choose um and so i thought that was that was super interesting uh for me um and then the rest of the time just um the storyline of how us as mexican soldiers we live and we fight for our country we fight for our city and you have to accept certain things such as that the cartel is embedded with the army is embedded with police there are people that are corrupt uh -huh. and it still doesn't take away from the fact that us me and uh you know los vaqueros we still want to fight for the country that we have uh -huh. but there are moments of acceptance um you know there's a there's a scene that cuts in i think uh, right before the border right after the borderline mission where we're driving through Las Almas town and you see like children with balloons, men with machine guns. Those are like things that you have to learn to accept because it is true. Right. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't take away from us wanting to, you know, eradicate the cartel and eradicate corruption and do that and stay true to what we believe in, which is our country and our people. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, there's uh, um, always uh, some, difficult subjects that uh, Call of Duty touches on. Um, you know, in, in this case, there is a civilian massacre. I think they hand, handled it well because you don't see it happen, really. It's just, you just sort of see the aftermath of it, really. And, yeah. And the soldiers, um, you know, in the alone episode, really trying to just sort of, you know, get through that and survive and, um, and uh, you know, be able to... Um, report back that it's happened really <laughs> yeah so it's, yeah it's not like you're perpetrating any of this and watching it happen i, I felt that was probably a good way to handle it you know, without yeah. without sort of skipping over the, that yeah. kind of thing ever happening right yeah 100 percent. yeah so um yeah I, I i think uh you know uh it is interesting to see how careful um they have to be in yeah. this kind of modern warfare story right? yeah exactly and, and there's you know there's themes and subjects that we know exist and are uh, exist in the real world and how to be able to tell that story without either a glorifying something or focusing on it so much that it takes away from the main you know thing that you're trying to to tell um but i think this game captures that very very well um yeah. and as a mexican i Fully approve of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is interesting that uh, they can uh, create a game. I think that, you know, probably, uh, you know, uh, is uh, acceptable to players in both both countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and uh, as far as the, uh, I don't know, things that were interesting about R Rodolfo, the character to you, uh, mm -hmm. is there anything that stood out to you? About that. Yeah, um, I wanted Rodolfo to be someone that, especially if you're the like, as the player, when you get introduced to me, he is one of the people that Vargas talks about, like we grew up loving our country, we grew up fighting for it, and we will die for it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things about my character is he's always there, he always has your back as Vargas is second in command, mm -hmm. like he always shows up, he's there. And in one particular scene where, um, you know, something happens to Vargas, you know, you then have to rely on see like who's going to get who's going to come to aid. And yeah. Rodolfo is the guy that always shows up and is there. And like, you know, um, that was one of the things that, that we really wanted to focus on. And especially like yeah. the concept of the Mexican superhero, you know, the Mexican super warrior. And it's like these guys exist. Mm -hmm. And they also do it because it's the love of their country and the love of their brothers and the people that f they fight alongside. Um, mm -hmm. And so with Rodolfo, I wanted to keep that kind of through line with um, with him and just like of that honesty and just being there and showing up and like, you know, I don't have 
superhuman powers, but at the same time, everything that I have, you know, within my human body is going to be given to, to fight for this cause. Um, and so it's been cool. And I feel as though really the relationship with Vargas and him, you can tell like they do have that bond such as soap and ghost, you know, when you play as them or like the whole one for one team. So, yeah. Did they, uh, uh, show you some of the research they did, uh, sort of, uh, from the real world and, uh, uh, there was just a lot of conversation with after focus groups, for example. Um, they would show uh, some of our cutscenes to Mexican military, to uh, people that have been involved in the drug uh, world in Mexico uh, mm-hmm. that are no longer. Um, but, you know, just kind of focus groups like that. And a lot of uh, the feedback would be like you guys are touching on, you know, themes that resonate with us, um, but everything is very true. Um, that all makes sense. Um, I think the biggest cutscene was the drive through Las Almas and, you know, Vargas is explaining everything to Soap and Ghost um, about how people are embedded with each other and you have to be weary and, and, but that's how it is, but we still fight for our country and we fight for what we believe in, which is Las Almas. Uh Um, And so coming out of the focus groups, seeing that people like, yeah, would say, yeah, that's how it is. That's exactly how it is. You know, Um, that kind of was really cool uh, a lot. So I, I kind of enjoyed that feedback coming back. Uh-huh. Yeah, very good. Well, um, yeah, it's uh, interesting to see where uh, this can go uh, more in, in the future, I guess, in video games in general or, or the Call of Duty franchise as well. You know? Yeah, I agree. I think this is a, a, a I'm very proud of this project, especially the way the story is told, the fun that you have. I mean, it's also kind of like a Michael Bay movie, you know, because <laughs> you know, yeah. playing through the missions is so much fun. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like I'm looking forward to see what else uh, comes out of this franchise and, 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 you know, the, the working with Blur Studios and seeing all the cutscenes back and seeing how realistic it is, especially that I'm just excited to see where it's going to take us. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, very interesting for for you to get in front of maybe uh, thirty million people around the world. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. I've I've gotten. Uh, I think both Alan, who plays uh, Vargas, and myself, we've gotten a lot of feedback from people like uh, in both languages, just saying how much they enjoy playing the campaign, and then also you know just little we at that we had liberty to add dialogue every now and then or talk to our translator and see if this was okay and so there's certain things that are very specific to like mexican dialogue that uh is so much fun that we were able to kind of insert every now and then and then um and then get the feedback from kids playing be like this is so great like i see myself as this character or i see myself playing as that or i want to do this you know um that's been really cool so very good congratulations and uh, yeah thank you Thank you.